Hello, we are very glad to have you with us, Mr. Georgios Dimitropoulos, a Greek filmmaker, also working uh, abroad. Uh, we are glad to have you here for thema- the thematic project and discuss many issues uh, on the audiovisual productions. You have been active as a film director, producer, producer writer and cinematographer on all most, most aspects of filmmaking. And you have, uh, managed, you have achieved... Uh, to collect uh, approximately 50 awards and 80 nominations from various uh, film festivals all over the world. Some of uh, which for uh, Best Fiction Film, Best Documentary, Best Cinematography, Environmental Film, Film on Nature, a very nice but interesting uh, part of film making, Best Editing, the Best Director, Best Actor, Best Music Soundtrack and Best Video Poetry, which we will get uh, back to that later on on the visual poetry you're making. Uh, you have traveled and worked in more than 50 countries for several projects and uh, ventures, also working for the third sector, such as uh, non-government organizations, but also for public and private sector organizations. You are also a lecturer in filmmaking at uh, Swansea University, a creative director at the Intensive Learning Academy, and the head of the Media Innovation Lab. We will elaborate on that to tell us what you do in all of these uh, roles. Also a strategic advisor to regional creative consortiums and engagement projects and the founder and leader of a non not for profit uh, community projects for the sustainable promotion of rural areas through the power of arts and culture. The latter is very close to thematic what the project is trying to achieve, uh, promoting uh, location awareness through several formats, one of which is audiovisual productions and uh, filmmaking. This was just a short introduction to what you have been doing the last uh, years. Our audience can find out much more about you and your work also at uh, cinematic.pictures. One can find your filmography, your uh, awards, your biography and so on. So uh, after this uh, short introduction, We can uh, guess that your profile and previous work, your journey actually so far in Greece and abroad, can provide uh, valuable insights for the the thematic project and for our pilot. Thematic actually focuses, as the acronym already suggests, on thematic tourism and more specifically on sustainable models, meaning complete experiences on sites of cultural significance and natural beauty. Tourism beyond the sea and sun model, uh, going uh, back to our roots, to our culture, to the na- to what the nature can uh, provide to us. Our pilot focuses on film tourism in Greece and promoting audiovisual productions as a means to boost local awareness and visibility. Actually, so let's start connecting the dots. Uh, along with you as an uh, accomplished film filmmaker. On your website, the location is always displayed for each of your films, where each film has been uh, produced, actually. How crucial is the location to you as a filmmaker? Um, Well, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, And thanks for the uh, introduction. (laughs) Um, So story is very important for me, and... uh, I like to build worlds um, either inspired by the location, there may be historical uh, factors, there may be natural factors, uh, in which case I write a story from scratch based on the location, or completely the other way. I could uh, feel passionate about the subject Uh, there is a message that I want to tell, especially uh, from the role of a documentarian. Um, maybe I want to raise awareness of, of a particular issue or kind of current affair. Uh, I develop the concept, write the script, and then I try to, uh, to find the perfect location through extensive location scouting. Um, So it all depends on the project. So it's a, it's a process that uh, we, myself and my team, are evaluating on a case-by-case 
uh, basis. So there's no method, all, all roads actually work exactly. uh, towards the outcome. Exactly. Uh, speaking of locations, have you ever uh, communicated or contacted or utilized uh, the film offices in Greece or abroad? Have you collaborated, uh, let's say, to call the film office in Athens and tell them, I need a location uh, at church? Where could I film a scene containing a, a church? Um, I believe that film offices are very, very important for filmmaking uh, and videography. Um, and it's really uh, important for, especially for young uh, upcoming uh, filmmakers to, to have that infrastructure and guidance and support Uh, especially during the, 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 the early days of uh, career development. So, um, utilizing film offices, uh, I think it's very, very important and there's no, there shouldn't be any embarrassment or shyness as to, oh, you know, let's not um, use a film office, even if it's just helping out with a um, piece of advice, uh, opening doors. You know, they could be very supportive with um, um, facilitating networking, uh, helping with licensing, insurance policies, um, sourcing crew. It just, uh, for me, a film office, uh, regardless where it's based, here in Greece or elsewhere, uh, for me it's like a, an incubation center. It's very, very important. I've been using film offices throughout my career. Um, uh, it's, it's, as I said, it's an integral part of uh, the pre-production process. And I, I, I have been really pleased to, to notice, especially uh, in, in, the recent, in the recent years and months, that Greece is heavily investing on the expansion of a film office network. And to, to be honest, I've started working with um, uh, some local film offices here in Greece, And it's something that um, I, I, I feel really, uh, as I said, very, very pleased and happy that it's happening in our country too. We are too, because it's, uh, it's crucial. There are too many issues in insurance, in, in legislation, and also there are some very interesting initiatives and competition, for, especially for young uh, script writers, filmmakers, uh, to get funding to, to be seen within the film industry and the community and the people providing the funds to do all this. So it's crucial to have all this infrastructure to support not, not just young, but also accomplished filmmakers when they go to switch to another, uh, let's say, genre. Uh, you need to have uh, uh, different locations. You need to have different, different kind of people's, people within the production. If you want to film a fast uh, racing scene, let's say, It's, it could be a different task and you might need too much advice on how to do it to keep everyone safe, to be le legal, let's say. Uh, your work has been predominantly filmed in locations in Europe, around Europe, as well as in Greece. What are the differences uh, with the, both your uh, main roles, I believe? Uh, are you facing different issues as a producers? as a producer in terms of costs, legislation, logistics, incentive, and so on. And also, the same questions, question what the differences are, as a filmmaker, regard, in regard to the, to the outcome, how your film actually looks in terms of aesthetics and the overall outcome. That's an excellent question. Um, there are significant differences um, between the role of the filmmaker and the producer. And um, sometimes it's a bit challenging to switch between roles uh, or you know, change hats, as they say. But um, I believe in, in, in my um, filmmaking projects, um, I think um, executing both roles to the best of one's ability is very, very beneficial because you can prevent certain uh, scenarios 
unwelcomed scenarios or challenges if you have the experience and the know-how to um, to examine and evaluate the situation from a producer's point of view and when necessary from a filmmaker's point of view because these two roles are sometimes can be quite uh, incompatible uh, so I, I have found this um, marriage by convenience or necessity quite beneficial and um, this is an advice that um, I have been offering to uh, my students um, you know, without any, ex any exception. Um, and, um, and moving into the other part of the question, what are the uh, differences between countries in terms of logistics and other uh, operational issues? I would say that every country is different. Uh, there are different bureaucratic um, uh, procedures, operational procedures, uh, different legislation, um, which is something that uh, a producer will find a way, will find the, uh, the formula to make the, uh, the pre-production and the production process relatively smooth. So it's not so much... Uh, um, a challenge that the filmmaker, the film director, or the creative uh, director will have to uh, deal with necessarily. Um, but that's something that um, you can work with. A factor that not many people take into account uh, are the cultural characteristics. Um, uh, there may be religious issues involved. There may be... Um, um, any kind of cultural issue that if you're not aware with the local um, society and local culture of where, where you're filming, that could be a major problem. That's why researching, um, um, having pre-production meetings um, by, by, by phone call or video call long before you actually step foot to another country, to another country it's uh, very important. Um, and I would say that uh, filming in um, the southern part of Europe has some distinct differences from the northern part. Again, it may, it may have to do with uh, bureaucracy or other um, uh, uh, operational procedures. Um, but um, I found it very, very interesting that the issues that we need to deal either from the point of view of a producer or a filmmaker, um, the sensitivity that one has to exhibit um, is, is uh, more so on the cultural side of things. For example, uh, local people, do they support filmmaking? How do they treat or react when they see a film crew? Um, what time local people go out? What time do they dine? Um, what days they are working? Because in some cases, even exactly. the working days are different. Exactly. What Especially is if you go across the Mediterranean, for example. In, Absolutely. Uh, in you North know, Africa. How they treat their Saturdays or Sundays. Uh, how, you know, how many times, uh, are, if you source local crew, you need to know if they are expecting one tick break or two tea breaks, uh, lunch, how they treat over time. What time they, they have their lunch. Exactly. So you, are, you have to remember, whether you're a producer or a filmmaker, you need to respect local customs and local culture. And you need to work. You're a guest in their country, so you just need to uh, comply with their rules. Even sometimes you may not always agree with them. It doesn't matter. You're a guest. So I think that's the most important uh, element out of Look, uh, everything as we talked about, it's culture and the local customs. Uh, that was actually the, my upcoming question. If you have uh, ever experienced any intense, any extreme positive or negative reactions by the local uh, communities in uh, the cases where you work, where, where you film, where you produced film? Um, it's... Um, 
With, with my team and on several projects that we've um, uh, been involved filming in various uh, places around Europe, uh, to name a few, uh, Wales, Scotland, England, uh, France, Spain, Italy, um, Greece. Um, the, the, we haven't dealt with any, any uh, you know, major issues. We haven't had any, any problems. And I would say that this is, uh, of course, there's always the, uh, the, um, the luck factor. Okay, so we haven't, we've been blessed, we've been fortunate that we haven't ever uh, dealt with a major issue. But I think it's also to do with the planning, the preparation, the research, the anticipation uh, of, uh, you know, just learning what matters at the place that you're planning to film. When to do it, how to do it, uh, be well prepared. So that that's a main outcome for all the younger Absolutely. filmmakers. Uh, and and I, I, I know that it can be a tedious procedure and it can be costly and sometimes can be um, the least exciting part of uh, the, f- the filmmaking process. But it's one that needs to be done. Otherwise, you'll just, you can double your your costs or your operational expenses just because you have to constantly find solutions. I, I think we need, we, we are problem solver, solvers, whether you're a producer or a filmmaker. That's what we do. We are problem solvers. Uh, but I think our energy and our passion should be mostly spent uh, making creative decisions rather than the strictly operational ones. Of course, you have to make operational procedures, but if you plan ahead, then you eliminate and, 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 uh, and you know, you just... You can focus on the creative exactly. problems. Absolutely, yeah. And in your case, well, I guess you are, uh, in most cases, both the filmmaker and the producer, you have to fight with yourself, actually, and yes. resolve the problems. <laughs> yes, so that's indeed. It. Now I get what you were saying before, that you are the one... Uh, having both problems, logistical pro- production problems and filmmaking. So if it's the pe- same person solving this, you can come up with more creative, productive solutions. Uh, Indeed. So now I get it. Uh, what would you like to change in the countries you, you mostly work in terms of productions in uh, helping you to, uh, make your life easier while making films? Okay, that is a very Let's interesting. Let's say a wish, not a, a very interesting prediction. question. I will talk about Greece, but first I'd like to comment on um, some of the countries I, I I've worked extensively. Let's talk about Britain. Britain is a very is a mature place in terms of um, uh, filmmaking. Uh, they've been doing it for ages. They've uh, created uh, support infrastructure they're very good at it they have the um, they have the necessary le- the legislation framework uh, infrastructure and of course they are considered one of the best places to uh, film in in Europe and beyond Europe uh, I'm not talking just about large studios I'm talking about finding local crew with the expertise and, and, and the skills and the talent um, and anything that one a filmmaker would expect to find in a, in a, in a developed uh, film hub or a developed film uh, location or a developed film uh, uh, destination. The issue that uh, I see uh, through some of the smaller projects I've been involved Uh, especially dealing with uh, young filmmakers, is that there isn't enough support for independent filmmakers. It feels as if everything is perfect, inviting for mid-size or large-size productions. But what about the next generation of filmmakers, those that uh, will eventually, years from now, will become involved with mid to large-size productions? So there is a gap in the market. Now, interestingly, interestingly enough, in Greece, I think we are on the other side 
of yes. the there of, are chances the, for uh, for indie films and yes so we do need to uh, in Greece there has to be um, uh, an effort into closing the gap between um, smaller projects with mid-size and and larger ones I believe Greece has this unique placement to learn from uh, other uh, markets, like I, I, I've already mentioned Britain as an example, to study their best practices, also study their uh, not so successful practices, and adapt uh, success stories so that um, we can... We, 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 we shouldn't be experimenting for decades and years. We uh, are in this unique position. We have uh, amazing natural light. It, it, Greece is, is a filmmaker's dream place to film. It's just the natural light is, is, is amazing. Um, we have uh, areas of outstanding natural beauty. We have warm, hospitable, hospitable uh, uh, people. We have talented um, technical and creative uh, crew. Um, there's so many things going for Greece at the moment. So we should be on the fast track, on the accelerated route. Let's study other success stories um, from various parts of Europe, okay, not necessarily in the UK, and focus on what works for Greece as a country taking into consideration our, our cultural approach to who we are and what we can do within the filmmaking. Uh, I would like to dive into your two of your uh, Greek-related films, namely Ersis and Melisanthi, which are labeled as cinematic poems. What should the viewers expect from this label, from these categories, cine- namely cinematic poems? It's, it uh, struck uh, us something remarkable. I haven't seen this kind of labeling on a film, so I would like to know more about what uh, these two films are about and why they are, they are labeled as cinematic poems. Well, cinematic poetry is, uh, um, is a form of documentary filmmaker f- filmmaking that has always fascinated me. And uh, I like to experiment with uh, uh, complex concepts. Um, if I can refer to the two um, recent uh, films that I, I filmed in, in Greece, uh, you already mentioned Ersis and Melisanthi, they're both cinematic poems. And uh, they're both part of uh, um, a larger documentary film series called Bi- Biodiversity in Crisis. That would be my follow-up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, the the main focus of this uh, film series is raising awareness about the unique biodiversity of our planet. But I wouldn't want to make another documentary. There, there are many documentaries out there. Um, and it's not about uh, competing with other uh, documentaries. Competition is healthy. We learn from each other as filmmakers. It's not about that. It's about making the content more engaging, more insightful, more interesting, more entertaining for the viewer. I don't want to create another documentary film where the audience feels like that we are preaching to them. Okay, that here are the facts. Uh, here's the, um, the the current situation. Here's w- where we're going to be in, in the future if we don't change our ways, uh, if we don't, um, you know, reverse the um, uh, what we're doing with uh, with our climate, for example. So what a cinematic poem can do, uh, and what I've done with those two films the, uh, um, in an experimental form is to um, tap into our past history. Now, Greece has a rich history, and uh, it, it, it was so exciting and interesting to, uh, for me as a documentarian to study through ancient myths and legends 
And these two are uh, projects that I've identified the location first, studied the, the local history, and then built the, the concept and the story and the script based on that. So Ersis uh, is based on uh, Lake Plasteras in central Greece. It's a truly beautiful location. It is, I've been there. And, and what fascinated me is that this is an artificial lake. This is one of those unique examples of human, interve- in, human inter- intervention actually working together to produce positive results for the local wildlife, for the local economy. And I wanted to use as as an example. So I studied uh, with my team the local uh, history. We found some myths and legends, and we fictionalized existing myths and legends in a way that not only the viewer will learn from uh, uh, from those uh, very very old stories, and we're going back two three thousand years ago, but we're also learning from our past history because we draw allegories between the past and the present. In the past, humans uh, used to live in coexistence with nature. This balance is no longer here with us. We are technologically so advanced that we feel as a species we're arrogant enough to disrespect that balance. So by tapping in the past, we can find out that we could do it. We lived like this. So we lived like that for, for centuries. It's up to us, humans, to rediscover our position in, in the uh, ecosystem on our planet uh, so that you know, we can live a, a sustainable pl- planet for, for the next generations. So these are heavy subjects, but the way we do it through cinematic poetry, we employ... Uh, stunning visuals so I, in my documentary films uh, and not and also fiction films as well um, I give cinematography a very special role sometimes a location acts as a, a, a lead character in its own way a lead character that interacts with the storytelling in a very dynamic and interactive way And uh, through the power of uh, spoken words, through poetry, blending nicely with the cinematography, they need something that um, the viewer will not treat, uh, as I said, as someone preaching to them, okay, this This is is what happens because I say so. No, the viewer at the end of the film can draw their own conclusions. If they enjoyed the, uh, this experience, uh, be it 10 minutes, half an hour, an hour, um, then I think we as filmmakers have done our job because at the end of the day we are storytellers and uh, we want to engage with our viewers. And that's, the, that's the whole point of making films, actually, to try to speak to someone. And I think it's a very interesting approach to not just give someone the info, visualize the info for them and have them digest it the way they want based on what uh, their experiences are. Um, So you kind of answered my follow-up question, which was if if Plastiras Lake and Kefalonia uh, respectively were inevitable, so they were quite, quite inevitable, They were necessary, they were characters within those two films. Um, is there another film coming for the Biodiversity in Crisis series, the one as a follow-up to Ersis and Melisanthi? Any plans um, for the future? Yes, indeed. There are uh, more films coming, uh, films that uh, will be produced, filmed and produced in, in, in Wales and Scotland, tapping on the, their local mythology. Um, but I'm also excited to, um, uh, to, 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 to mention that uh, we have planned filming uh, in Greece, in various, various locations in Greece uh, this coming summer, uh, with, a, with an idea to produce another three documentary films. Um, they will not all be cinematic poems. We are, uh, of course, exploring 
different uh, forms of documentary filmmaking uh, uh, to, to the best of our ability. Uh, but uh, as I said, coming to Greece to film in this wonderful place with the magical lighting and uh, warm and hospitable people, it's something that I always um, I look forward to. And uh, it's only maybe two, two months away before we start filming in Greece again. Great. Nice, nice to hear that you, that you are filmmaking uh, in Greece uh, again. Uh, in terms of cultural significance, during the project, uh, the regional unit of the Sprotia was one of the partners of the project. And we have discussed about sites like uh, the Acherodas River, which is a very dramatic, very significant point of cultural reference in Greek ancient drama. There are places like this who have vast significance to, to all Greeks, to, to, the, to the, the ancient theaters and to stories and mythologies that have repeated several times within theatrical plays and film, filmography and things like that. References that come from Greece which could be utilized in fiction and non-fiction to convey a message actually to modern day. Um, so, I absolutely agree. It doesn't have to be uh, non-fiction. In fact, Greece is probably better equipped for fictional storytelling, again, because of the magical and uh, very beautiful locations, but the rich history and culture. Um, we are also planning to do a, a full feature um, uh, drama, Uh, it's actually a psychological thriller that we uh, we will be filming uh, next year, uh, again in, in in Greece, and um, um, location is is everything, together with 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 the story. With the story uh, behind it. Absolutely. Actually, um, one last question. Actually. Uh, how do you feel about the rebate? Uh, do you feel it is actually affecting the, the production, the, the pace of production here in Greece? And is it helpful for the, for the Greek filmmakers? Um, it, yes, it is. Um, it, it can be. Obviously, there, there are uh, constraints and limitations. And one has to do a lot of uh, research to find if the, they are eligible. Um, The, the beauty of filmmaking uh, is, is about collaborating with um, similar-minded creatives. And uh, it doesn't have to be from the same city or from the same country. You can collaborate nowadays with the technology uh, we have at our disposal. We can work with uh, different people based on different locations. In fact, my, my team is truly uh, international. We have, we call it our, our, our own cinema family and we have partners and collaborators from you know, North America, Central America, North Africa, lots of European countries, uh, Asia, Australia, New Zealand. So physical boundaries are no longer a problem as long as, as I say, we share the same passion and share in this, uh, a similar mentality. This is truly a blessing because we learn. It's all about sharing experiences. We learn from each other. I'm a great believer um, of uh, peer learning, no matter the age, whether you're young or not so young. It's always very beneficial and useful. So, uh, and this is something that the European uh, community, but also, uh, to my knowledge, the, uh, uh, the, the recent uh, film incentives from, from Greece, from the Greek government, um, are advocating and uh, promoting international collaboration. Uh, So, and I think many other countries do the same. And the, this is a, a, a key uh, point to attract um, film investors and producers and filmmakers to your country 
if you want to promote your country as, as a filming hub or film location or film des destination. So I think that Greece is doing exactly what um, is the right thing to do uh, to promote international collaboration, but at the same time, um, giving uh, local talent a platform to work with international teams. So at this moment of time, if I'm not mistaken, the, uh, the, the film incentives from uh, Greece are one of the most attractive ones, in, not just in Europe, globally. 40% um, cash rebate, 30% uh, tax relief. Very, very generous. But of course, you need to uh, um, uh, find out if uh, you're eligible to that. Again, uh, international collaboration is key here for all these financial reasons plus the creative reasons the exchange I mentioned. So I'm really, really pleased that uh, uh, in addition to the expansion of the uh, film offices in Greece, we have very, very attractive uh, film incentives and uh, that uh, will organically uh, help the local talent and also bring international talent to film in Greece. Hopefully. It's been a pleasure having you. Uh, we are looking forward to more filmmaking by, by you in Greece and abroad and seeing your films uh, within the near future. Thank you very much for being here. Glad to have you on board and hopefully we'll get more from you on a follow-up project uh, like Thematic. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.